So you've been thinking about getting a wideband oxygen sensor for your C5 Corvette. What are good reasons for getting a wideband sensor? And uh, which one would you choose? And how would you go about installing it? We're going to walk through all of those questions together next. So stay tuned. So why would you need a wideband oxygen sensor for your C5? Well, if you accelerate aggressively uh, very often, or if you're planning on doing any tuning work, you need to be able to measure your car's actual air-fuel ratio at higher loads, basically anything above part throttle to wide open throttle. Your car's got a pair of narrowband oxygen sensors, which do a really good job of keeping the fuel ratio at what's called stoic at part throttle and idle, but the narrowband oxygen sensors simply cannot measure accurately air fuel ratios above the part throttle area to wide open throttle. So that's where a wideband oxygen sensor comes in. It can actually measure the air fuel ratio that your engine's operating at from idle all the way to wide open throttle and everything in between. And that's why you need a wideband oxygen sensor. A few years back, I researched for quite a while to identify a well-respected, budget-friendly wideband setup. As a result of that exercise, I chose the AEM Model 30-4100. As of January 2020, the AEM model number is now 30-4110 and sells for around $215 at Summit Racing. The AEM wideband has been fantastic over the past few years and I would highly recommend it. One important feature of the AEM wideband is that it can be set up to display the air-fuel ratio for gasoline, which is what most enthusiasts are used to, or if you are familiar with it and prefer, you can also set it up to display in Lambda. So where can you mount your wideband oxygen sensor gauge? For a permanent installation, many C5 owners choose to go with a two or three pod pillar mount, as this tends to yield a very professional looking installation. So this is one option to consider. As for me, after using a wideband for several years, I have found that once my tune is where I want it, my wide open throttle air fuel ratios pretty much stay dialed in. So these days, I tend to only hook up my wideband oxygen sensor on this temporary setup a few times a year for a little tuning or a weekend at the track. Now for those of you who just cringed a little at that statement, please know that I do have a knock sensor warning light that's set up so anytime I get any knock it alerts me. Also I tend to watch my long-term fuel trims closely which would likely give me fair warning of a developing fuel related issue. Using the attached cable connector I do connect my wideband to HP tuners for scanning purposes anytime I'm doing any tuning and of course for every weekend at the track. Next I'm going to go ahead and show you the way I like to hook up the components of the wideband kit to the C5. You can do this in your driveway on jack stands or if you have a lift available that makes things a lot easier. We're looking at the front of the vehicle here. We're right up by the exhaust manifold and you can see the narrowband front oxygen sensor and that is used by the PCM to make all the calculations for fuel ratio under very low load conditions and idle. Moving backwards, we've got the first pup, pup cat. Same thing on the driver's side. We've got the second catalytic converter. And we've got the rear oxygen sensors. Now what I like to do is to remove one of the existing rear oxygen sensors and connect the Bosch wideband sensor in its place. Alternatively, you can remove the entire H-pipe unit, which really doesn't take that long if you're going to keep the car for a while and do this over several years. And you can take the supplied bung that comes with the kit and have it welded in here. From the wideband sensor that's screwed in, I typically will start routing the cable around the side here. Here's the heat shielding. I'll zip tie it here. On, this is on the passenger side. Here's the connector between the wideband cable and the cable that goes to the gauge. Got another zip tie here. 
moving forward, I got another zip tie here. Now, this isn't that far away from the catalytic converter, but I can assure you from putting on multiple passes and multiple miles through the years, it's far enough away that there's no melting or uh, anything like that taking place. As I get to the front of the heat shielding, I start making my way to the passenger side rocker panel. Here I've got another zip tie through an existing hole. And another one over here through an existing hole. So, so far I've drilled no holes. I'm just routing things tight and out of the way. I did drill a small hole here in the rocker to have a small zip tie hold the cable up before it makes the bend up the side of the car. So let's move to the outside of the car and I'll show you how I run it to the passenger compartment. Moving along the outside of the car, uh, all you really need, I gotta put a piece of uh, Gorilla Tape here. Duct tape will work in a pinch, but Gorilla Tape is, if you've ever used it, it's much, much better. And plus it's black so it hides in better. One piece down low, one piece a little bit above the venting, and two pieces on the windshield, which clean up really easy with a little uh, wax and grease remover or other solvent when you're done. Uh, solvent only on the windshield. Down here you would just want to use wax and grease remover when you remove these pieces so you don't harm your paint's finish and put a little wax on when you're done. Then I just crack the window and route the cable inside the passenger compartment. This technique has worked well for me for the past several years. Uh, I've got it down to where it only takes me about 20 minutes to set this up. And if you want a temporary mount as opposed to permanent, this is one way you can do it. It works well. And at 130 miles an hour, I haven't once had any of this come loose. Back inside the C5, the cable comes down to the wideband, mounted on the temporary setup that I wish I would have painted because now it's in a video. So guys, this really wasn't a everything there is to know about oxygen sensor video. It was more of a first time guide for someone contemplating a wideband for their C5. The types of questions that I had a few years ago when I was thinking about buying my first wideband. So hopefully uh, I achieved in answering some of those questions. If I missed some of them, by all means, go ahead and uh, put the questions in the comments below. If you like the video, please hit that thumbs up button. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And as always, I appreciate your watching.